the Sharp Tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. In the world. And today, I got my man Keegan in the building. And we was just talking about the Kelpie situation because this hit me up one day, mad at me, talking mm -hmm. about... Why, hey man, why you do the kid in like that, man? Come on, man, pick on somebody that's, I'm like, hold on. Was I really picking or was I really trying to save him, bro? Right. If you really look at it, you know what I'm saying? Like either he would either, listen, pressure either busts pipes or it makes diamonds. Period. Either he's gonna be, he has to be battle tested. Yep. So here, let's see if this is really you. I might've saved him. He might be like, man, f this. You see him already, he don't even talk about no pimping. And then yeah. going and trying to do, pursue Something music. Else. That's cool, do what you can do, but don't try to portray and act like you somebody that you not, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. hated or love, like I, where I came from, it's not the most liked. So I don't want to see a nigga in a jacket that he don't even know if he's even really down for. You know what I'm saying? Later on down the road. It's like if you if you really look at it, yeah. like I don't want to see that happen to that boy. Right. He's a kid, man. You know what yeah. I mean? I think for me, like I was telling you off camera, like I was telling you off camera, uh, if you're really out here in these streets really working, really hustling, putting yeah. money first, you're yeah. not on YouTube all day and night. Yeah. So, like, you catch a little clip here, a little clip there. What do they like to clip? They like to clip up Sharp yelling at people. Yes. And they like to clip up Kelpie getting beat up. And I go with, and you know what, bro? It sucks sometimes because, you know, I really do try to get a, a message across. Yeah. You know, and I do try to give some free game, bro. Yeah. I, I get my voice is raspy, and I guess sometimes maybe the delivery ain't always up to par for people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... Don't look at the the don't look at who it is in my background. Just listen to the message because right. I guarantee you, if you put some of my words on somebody that's of a stature to people that people like to look at, all of a sudden it would make a lot more. It'll sense. make a lot more sense. But because it's You're me, lying. it's it's my background. People don't really want to listen to it. It's yep. like ah, uh, he just a low life pimp anyway. It has been yes. pimp anyway. I, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey man, you know it's I'm, easy to judge. He's easy. I'm easy to judge. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, find yeah. me. They find me sitting there doing some, I guess you would call some of the judging. Right. You know, and they don't, I guess. I'm That's what it is, to too. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I think it is? I think, too, that what you just hit it right on the head. You said, and I'm here doing some of my own judging. So people think, it's almost like people want to be mad. I bet you there are people, you've judged, you probably, not judged, but you probably talked about some people that some people like. So now they just don't like Sharp. Because you had to say some truths about something that, you know what I mean? Whatever. I just did a, um, I had an interview drop yesterday with um, this girl named Masika. You know, she was real popular. Uh -huh. You know, I guess, you know, yep. and uh, it seems like, because I went back and I watched it, I said, damn, because you know, people were slandering me. I'm like, damn, okay, which I love it, bro. I love yeah. it, it doesn't bother me. It's all in good fun, you know? But I'm yeah. like, damn, I must have really fed up in this interview. But I go back and I look and I'm like, damn, all I really did was tell baby like, hey, it's okay to get some people some game. She like, nope, she wants to closet it up, you know, and mm. hold it for herself and mm. pretty much say, look at me and <laughs> look at you. You know oh. what I'm saying? Like, she don't want to get nobody no game. I was just like, hey, I think we should be sharing that, especially when we got the youth watching this. Shit, man. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Hey, sure. me or love me. I guarantee you some of these kids going to listen to this as a time capsule. Some of these kids are going to go back 20, 30 years from now and watch this and maybe be able to use something it's a time from capsule. This, what? Bro. Say it again. It's a time capsule. On, baby. That's all this Talk is. That's all this is, man. It's a yeah. time capsule, man. Hate yeah. it or love it. Hopefully you can find one piece yeah. of relatable information in this that might give your life that curve you was looking for. And to be fair, name one other person I reached out to and said anything about the goofy that goes on in here. Then I'm saying it's a lot of good too but like any of the goofy going on i never wrote nobody i know that you know what the f you're doing and i understand what level you on are Q iq wise mm -hmm. so when i thought it was wrong what was happening to kelpie that's why i talked to you yeah. i reached out to you because i know you got that type of wisdom yeah. so but then i watched everything and i was like oh man sharp could have went way harder he I took could've. it easy i took it easy he took it easy i on. just I, i'll be honest man i just one thing i can't Keep stand it 100, is bro. a mother uh, one thing i can't stand is a mother sit in my face and just blatantly lie when yeah. we know the truth. Yeah, when, when we already you, know the we truth. We know flat out, there's no ifs, ands, there's no mystery here, there's no, no well, are we, I wonder if, no, yeah. it's clear as day, right. bro, and I'm right. gonna call that what it is. Yeah, and Kelpie looks very young. He looks like he could pass for 16, 17 on camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, man, there's this little 15, 16, 17 year old kid there who wa probably wants to be like Sharp. He probably idolizes Sharp. That's why he wanted to be on Sharp Tank. I bet you when he got the call for Sharp Tank, he's like, oh, my God, he's jumping around in his room. So then he gets on Sharp, and then he gets bumped out like that. I'm like, damn. But listen, when he, you can't call people. What Almighty did was fully justified. That dude is a grown man. He's not a kid. 
And when I realized that, I said, no, nah, I was wrong. My bad. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. My fault. That, that, hey, listen to me. And shout out to my almighty. I mean, because I don't think, because let's be honest, right? Let's Nobody's really, taking that. Let's face really to look face. at it, right? If he would have sat there, because people try to act like it's words, right? Like it's just words. Nah. But if he would have sat there yeah. and let this boy call him that, right? Right. His career would have been down Over. the sniggin up inside the Over. blender. They would have poured it out and tried to pour it back in. Until he got a video camera of him whooping Kelpie. Like a something of that something type of sort. Something to get it back, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because that was going to kill his whole motherfucking Let me career. ask you this, Sharp. Let me ask you this. It's almost like it's almost like prison politics sometimes out here, bro. Period. Even on this podcast. Because if someone... Listen, when you're out and about and you're in a normal life, someone calls you a <laughs> as a grown man, good for you, man. I'm going to keep driving. I'm in the Benz, bro. You're in a Toyota. Have a good life. But when you're in front of the people and your career is this, someone calls you a to your face, you can literally lose your career if you don't man up and handle your you business. Don't man up and handle your business. It's it's bro. It's, it's a hell of a career you guys it's choose. A, it's an ugly truth, but a truth nonetheless. No, it is. It's 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 rough, Keegan. But you know what, man? Like I said, I wouldn't even try to say it's it's prison politics. I think it's just life, life, and just being a man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's definitely man, a man, but at a corporate level, like, or on a normal level, where people wake up and do nine to fives every day, people can call you. a at work, you you can't lose your job. You can't beat somebody up and lose your job, right? But in this atmosphere, you have to. Yeah, but motherfuckers ain't just walking blatantly around in just regular jobs calling people, people either. You ain't lying because that's sitting there. That that's like that's that's some type of that's a sense of harassment. That's disrespect. Yeah. They could take that right up and go snitch too. Y'all need an saying? HR department that has Man, two pairs of boxing gloves. We gotta we gotta, <laughs> hey, we gotta listen to. You. I'm gonna tell you this: what we don't try to promote here on No Jumper, and this is real. It might be the beefs. You might see yeah. the, I get that part of it, you know? Yeah. So I had to say that before I say this. We do not promote, like, physical action. Like, what, sure. happened, with, what, happened, with, what happened with Kelpie and Almighty, it was, it just happened the way it happened, yeah. bro, and it happened so fast. fast. It happened in a split that was it. second. It was right. a bitch. What? A bitch, bing, bing. what'd you say? Bang, bang, bang. Bang. It, it, it happened so fast you couldn't call security quick enough right man, bro right because right. it was unraveling you know yeah. what i mean yeah so absolutely i just want people to know and you because i know you watch it you know what i'm saying yeah. you watch this shit yeah. i feel like we got not only somebody here is making a move i feel like well, we got a fan here like you watch for this sure shit. So oh absolutely so it's cool bro. so it's cool absolutely. to finally sit down with somebody and maybe talk about it and get a little bit of transparency you can see the fans Side you, of it, you get a little bit of yeah. transparency in it, man. And yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand what it can look like, but if people yeah. knew how to just dissect when what they're watching, right? I don't think we would have too many problems or people wanting to say that we are a problem. There would be. I bet you this: ninety percent of it would be gone. Ninety percent of it would be gone because they would see the original thing. They would have saw Kelpie. I didn't even see Kelpie call him. It's like this is all I saw. A little bit of argument back and forth between Almighty, and then Almighty gets right off on him. Boom, 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 boom. Damn, I ain't seen no one else get whooped inside of no jumper like that. Like, not in a long time. So uh, why is Kelpie, this little kid, getting last whooped? Last person that got twisted. Hey, I said this, Donnie. Last nigga that got twisted up here was Twisty P. I said, they twisted Twisty P to fuck Oh, up. yeah, that tripped me out, Shout bro. Shout out Twisty P wherever you may be. Yeah, poor They twisty, twisted bro. my nigga up, man. He, he was fucked up. But I guess, but see. Came in, took like a but, man. But people, hey, but people, and, and I'll say this for a general statement. People put themselves in them type of situations. situations. He and I'll tell you why. And he was, uh, I guess, he was on live the night before talking shit to the niggas that he got problems See? with or whatever. Long story short, and letting yeah. him know where he's he going gonna to be. be, where he's gonna be. You do that type of shit, bro. Like, come on. At You're the asking time, for it, bro. At the time, everybody knows where no jumpers at. Right. Everybody. Yeah. It wasn't it's hard no secret. to figure out. It wasn't no secret. Motherfuckers. Too many people have pulled up by that point, man. There's Damn. been thousands of interviews and panels yeah, and things yeah, like yeah, that Yeah, 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 yeah. And know? then all them conversations to people who ain't been here, but they know where it is because their homie told them they were here. Hey, man. Yeah. I, 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 listen, it, bro. long story short, I just feel like we don't promote that, man. And, like, I get it what it can look like. But y'all got to f***ing lighten the f*** up. Hey, man, yeah. it's, it's, it's media. It's f***ing, it's internet. It, it's not... Yeah. It's the majority of it. Like the interviews are reality. This is reality. That's right. why I always like Sharp Tank, and I hope that people always like my show for it too. Because this shit ain't scripted, homie. Right. Nothing that we do in this building is scripted. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like me and you sitting here. Yeah, I got a couple questions for you, but it's all off the dome. It's yeah. all about how the conversation engages. It's Correct. all about how we can conduct this. I always felt like that's what makes for a great interview. Yeah. 
I could dig that. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk about you. Enough talk about fucking. I don't want to talk about this kid. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Fucking kid, man. But I get it because me and you got into it over that shit months ago. It's months ago. And, but me before, and you got to be fair, it. just so that everything's cleared up, uh, Sharp Facetime me. I listen. I wrote some shit. Sharp Facetime me face to face. What's going What's on, up? man? And, and listen, because me real, and Sharp, nigga. me and hey, me and Sharp don't stay far from each other. And like, had Sharp, I could have really caused a stupid situation. For for me and unfortunately for Sharp, but Sharp picked up the phone, bro, like a real one. And I, that's all I'm gonna say. My my whole opinion on everything changes when you see how a motherfucker act, bro. Behave with actions, then then you could change your opinion about right. people, bro. Right. And then you get his side of the coin. But see, I'm gonna tell you this. I was I, wrong. Well, I, and I and I thank you for admitting that. But I look at it like this, bro. Use your letter quick. Sharp. I don't never. Uh, I see why people don't ever like people. I'm not saying I'm a celebrity because I, I mean I'm very. No, you well are known. though. I get in stopped. My I get stopped everywhere, you know. But yeah, I, I I don't look at myself like that. So when a motherfucker like at me or got something to say about me or to me, like I go and I hit him up, bro. Like what's the what's up? Like the what, best what, what type of problem do we have? And let's solve yeah. it because yeah, yeah. that's just how I am, dog. Yeah. I'm not I'm not yeah. a nigga that's gotta sit there and put it on the cameras every fucking time right. and say hey. Look at me. Nah, nigga, I handle my business behind the scenes because right. you have to look at it like this, bro. When people get into beef, especially online, let's look at it like this. Me and you get into it. We're well known, right? We end up getting into it. Fucking, I don't even know what happened. I wasn't even around. Something happens right. to you or something happens to me. Guess right. who they're coming to first? Me you. or you. They're, they're going to come to me, me or you. You know what I'm saying? Because we had the online controversy and something bad or fucked up could happen to you. Or, and I didn't even have nothing to do with it. But because we had problems online, it's going to be looked as such. Right. You know, and I think that's why I'll be like, man, you got to handle your beefs, man, and your problems, man, on the, on the back channel, my yeah. nigga. Like, no, you do. Because if not, they'll show up on camera and haunt <clears> you. Yeah. They can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I, I learned a valuable lesson like this. Sometimes being a fan... You do not see a human. You see a character on a show from yeah. a screen. Yeah. Right? This no yeah. jumper shit and everything is blown up so much. You you don't know what's real and what's scripted. So you you start judging people. You'll judge Sharp. You'll judge Flacco. It's real easy to just think things and then just write them behind a screen. And you don't have the intention to be fake or talk shit. It's just that that human connection is not there. Then you meet somebody and you that's a person. They have reasons and rhymes and you reasons. You know what it's like to live with that? Oh, it's got to be fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Bro. It's got to be know crazy, what bro. It's really like Keegan to live with that type of shit. And that's why I, I want to say this to the fans, bro. Yo, we should, we as fans, we really need to chill out and understand these motherfuckers are humans, bro. You know what's so cold? Because and I'm not saying me, but you know, I, I see them. They don't just do it to our channel. Luckily, we got some strong folks that work here. Oh, I ain't gonna for lie. Sure. We got some like the people that are for, for the sure. on like that are on air talent or you know what I'm saying, doing from media news, whatever the case may be. They're pretty strong headed, man, because we we see the the fans, they go crazy, bro. The comments like they eat your ass alive. Like it ain't that even part. no like it's no tomorrow. You yeah. know what no, I mean? It's, it's ugly, bro. But I can only imagine some of the people that can't take that, bro. That shit fuck around, make a motherfucker commit suicide, bro. Look, bro, I the other that day shit make a yeah. really commit suicide. I got my first real time. So I got a video on, on something called 23 and 1, and it's explaining my lockup story. Okay. And they got a lot of subscribers. Uh, Josh is doing a really good job with his channel. He's been popping. Anyway, it was all positive feedback on my shit. So I didn't really have to feel nothing bad. Everybody loved me, told me I should do this YouTube shit. Then the other day, I go to AD's crib, and we drop my, our music video together. Bro, garbage can symbols, uh, skinny white lush, like all this stuff. And I thought I could just take things over. I'm a grown-ass man. You can talk shit. Bro, when you see that shit in droves of just bad, negative people... That aren't even giving you a Wait, chance to be heard. Break this back down to me. You just mentioned. I got a my first people. taste of it. Like you just what mentioned it's like. a couple people. What do you mean, yeah. skinny lush? What are you talking about? So like, like, like they were called in the comments. Like people, like before the song even came on, uh -huh. they were already hating. Them. Like, 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 like it don't matter how good this song is. Yeah. We're not even gonna give it a chance. You're skinny lush. You're this. Uh, fuck Vegas. Fuck you. And this is the song you, know, that you just did with AD. With AD you before the music even turns on, bro. And I'm like, oh. I see. I couldn't imagine it on like a sharp level or an Adam Twenty Two level. Like, it's got to be insane, bro. bro. It'll, it'll, if you're not, if you're not uh, battle ready for what comes with this shit, yeah, it's gonna fuck you up, man. In the long run, you know. Like all I can say is for any type of artist like yourself that's trying to really get on in this game, homie, you're gonna have to really, really. Uh, Ignore the hate and just accept the love. And see, that's what people don't understand about me. You, I don't give a fuck. 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta ignore that shit. Like laugh. You can't with tell. Them. Yeah. Laugh yeah. With them because, exactly. Because half the people that's gonna meet you are going. They're they're gonna want to shake your hand. Half the people that talk shit. That. Thank you. And listen, I'm not trying to make myself sound like that person. But what did I just do? As soon as you pulled up. Walked up and shook your fucking hand. Shook my motherfucking because hand. Because I did my research and you realize that these are people, man. Like, motherfuckers are just trying to feed their kids, bro. That's really what it comes down to. But the problem is they're clipping shit. And they're seeing a couple clips and it's real easy to get an opinion about somebody off of a off of a piece of a clip. The real the news media does the same shit in politics, bro. You know what I mean? Speaking of kids, man, let's talk about your childhood. Yeah. How was your childhood, man? Rough? Was it easy? Yeah, I mean, did it was... Get, did you get bacon and eggs every morning? That mom part. Make your, mom make your pancakes? You know, we were on the EBT, so we ate we ate decent because we had EBT. Mm. You know, if anybody that has EBT that really knows what it's like to live off the government, you're eating good, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, th this was back when um, the food stamps were actually stamps. Yeah, I remember, You know what I'm saying? Remember, yeah, man, we're close to the same the color, age, bro. I remember the color books. You know what? I'll, I'll, yeah, they helped with the little checkbooks. <laughs> the EBT shit. We'll, we'll yeah. talk about your childhood. But, like, with EBT, long story short, like, I feel like the card... Made more people want to get on it because you just got to go swipe it. It was embarrassing Correct. spinning them fucking. Oh, stamps. it was stupid embarrassing. My it mom was wasn't proud of that shit. Nobody put is. her head so down, so reaching her back. So you know what it would do? It would make people try to at least figure out a way to try to get get off, off that, that shit. shit. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like it's like a credit card. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what a motherfucker swiping. No, right? And there's no shame in it. Tony, you don't know what a motherfucker swiping right. these days. You know what I'm saying? They're just swiping a card so it makes people more comfortable to want to be on it. When yeah. you have all the funny ass colors you pull out and it look like Monopoly money. I agree. It, it oh yeah, you, thank you. Light green, blue. Uh, they had the light orange. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was wild, bro. My mom used to put her head down. Yeah. Paint on the counter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like shit. Yeah. But so that's what that was like. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like for me, it was like my dad walked out when I was two. You know what I'm saying? They split up. My mom and dad split up. Uh, she ended up getting married to a dude that ended up abusing me and my family real bad. You know what I'm saying? For like a year or so, I got really horrible trauma from that. Um, ended up. Kind of harboring a lot of resentment by the time I was about 13 or 14 and uh, ended up picking up a gun and ended up doing like, man, bro, like over 100 armed robberies by age like 15. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing a lot of crazy stuff, man, at a young age. You, you know doing this in Vegas? Yeah. All throughout Vegas. We ran through everything in Vegas, bro. Every single corner store you drive past in Vegas, I promise you I've been inside and I hit it. Like we promised because we were doing laps. We would, we would know we've hit this store three times this month. We got to try to find a different one. We already hit this one twice. Which one are we going to hit now? Like, fuck. Let's yeah. go up to Henderson. And that's where our demise was. We went to the rich people's neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? We started yeah. robbing the rich, bro. And that's where we fucked up at. The police are going <clears> to <throat> show up. Yeah, because they going to come for them. And he fucked up how that works. It's like, damn, like, you do it down the neighborhood, they gonna take forever, and they probably, the cases will go cold. Yeah. As soon as you hit a rich motherfucker house, and nobody getting any bright ideas, I don't sit there and condone it nor support it. But I'm just like, you know, you start yeah. hitting a rich motherfucker house, I mean, I thought that's where you was trying to go anyway. I never understood why we try to, I don't want to, if I was a robber, right? Right. I never want to rob in where I'm from, because... I know we ain't got nothing because if we yeah. did, I wouldn't be trying to rob. You know, that's a very good point. I think for me, because I was a child, I was just doing it for the, um, I was just doing it to be active, yeah. right? So like fighting, the, robbing. Like needed, so you don't feel like you needed the money. Listen, my mom always worked hard. Like by that time, we had got off food stamps and we were just living in inner city. Okay. Like she, okay, in Vegas, 80 or $90,000 could buy you a home at this time. Yeah, I remember. So like, it was like a normal place. Like, like, like they were, you have both parents, you're doing really good. But even just my mom making 14 an hour, she was able to lease a small home and we were living okay. You know what I'm saying? We weren't struggling like that, bro, by this age. So there was no reason for me to be robbing. It right. was it makes sense. I like how you clarified that. You was like, yeah. by this time in my life, yes, we didn't have no point in doing it. We that. went through Mama that. Mama wasn't fucking with EBT no more. No. We had a nice home. We actually had some groceries in the house. We had groceries mama, in the house. Yeah. Bought. We weren't in the suburbs, but we were below the suburbs, but we were not in the projects. Yeah. If you're unless you're day to day in the projects, there's no reason to be robbing. And I even then I don't condone it, but I understand how a motherfucker wake up with holes in his shoes yeah. and say, "I'm tired. I want some J's too." It's a mental, and go get it. It's a mind fuck. Yeah, it I really understand is, that, bro. It yeah. is. It's a mind fuck, man. I understand that for real. I was around a lot of people that had holes in their shoes, and they were like, "Are you riding with us or not?" It's like, man, I'm riding with you, bro. You should be like, hell no, you don't see these fresh jimmies on my feet. <laughs> see, and, and it's funny because play some basketball, <laughs> Jamal. You did. <laughs> now it's funny because we got the Felas. We had the Felas back then. It was the yeah, first the time. Yeah, the Grand Hills. It the was the first time. The Grand Hills was the Felas. With the straps up top. 
the high top feelers. I know what you're talking about, bro. They came in early two thousands. Yes, red colors. and black, black and baby blue. And you could get two pairs for sixty dollars. Two pairs for sixty bucks. And that's was my tops and the low tops. Yes, and that was. I remember. I was going to school and I was getting made fun of because mom couldn't afford the shoes for a while. And then I, I remember when my mom first got that fourteen dollars an hour because yeah. she took us to the to the to the shoe store out there and she was like. Get a pair of shoes, and it was like a, it was like it was like a celebration because we were able to buy. We went stop going to Payless. You know oh, what I mean? Went to Payless, bro. We li- I was born and raised on Payless, bro. Yeah. Always Payless until like damn near high school. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta think you gonna take a lot of shit for that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you gonna take <laughs> a lot of shit for that. That was fucking horrifying. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a horrifying feeling for for a kid, man. For like, a young man, bro. Because let's I'll be honest, and I'm sure a lot of people know this, you know, and I speak to the viewers on this one, like, these kids be more crueler than adults. Of course. Like, you know this, like, because there's really no filter for it. There's no. really no consent. Like, and I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't blame the kids because they don't know. Is that up to their parents to be teaching them this? Absolutely. Yes. yes. But, I don't never really knock a kid to expect him at 13 years old. He's never seen a 12. body jump off a bridge and splatter over being bullied, bro. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never seen nobody, like, the consequences of it. They don't, they don't grasp but what it's like to lose a child. At first, I thought that was a little extreme that you said that. But I'm, That's I, what I, happens, I, I, though, I when you fuck with people. No, no, you know what I'm saying? People can die is my I'm point. Gonna, and I'll one-up it for this one to say they have seen it, bro, because it's publicized everywhere with these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, of, of yeah. kids being bullied and committing yeah. suicide or kids can't take it anymore and coming back to school with a motherfucking gun. <laughs> They, that's what they worry about. Yeah, the I guess nowadays it's different because when we were young, that shit wasn't really happening like that. But I guess like like personally, like it's one thing because like you could watch the war on TV and know that people are dying. But when you're going to school and then what the kid next to you isn't there now, and you're like, where's where's so and so? Oh man, he killed himself. Remember y'all was calling him fat yesterday? Now that that kid might understand the gravity of his words towards somebody. I think these children, they're you know your your frontal lobe ain't even fully developed until what they say what twenty four. 25? Yeah, but I look at it But like, it's not an excuse. I understand what you're saying. It, no, I look at it because these these kids, they do see it, bro. Like, it's not... That's why you said they're they are not oh. blind to it anymore. It's... It, okay. Bro, they hear about it all the time around them, like from other schools and kids that were bullied and... and because of our it. technology, they can see it. <clears throat> so Facebook. you're saying there's no more excuses. I remember a girl killed herself. I think it was. I don't remember her name, but I remember seeing a while back, man, some way while back. It was on Facebook. At that. Yeah. I don't even use Facebook anymore, but just... Looking at like this little girl, I guess they were bullying her so much online. You know, the kids from other from school or whatever was bullying her online. Because now so it's much. not just one school. Because of social media, it's everywhere. Yeah, she killed. She killed herself, man. Damn. Like, come on, man. Like, <clears throat> this shit needs to really come together. And that's why I say, man, for these babies, man, I really do care for them, man, and I feel for them because it's a different day and age that we living in. I'm... Yeah, I mean, you remember our last conversation once I, you know, once I told you I was wrong and we actually started talking, started talking about meeting up at the Silverton. Um, I told you, I said, bro, my, my goal in life is to get to a place where I can rehabilitate these youth. You know what yeah. I'm saying? These kids. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And we both agreed on that. You know what I mean? Like, like these kids definitely need guidance right now, bro, because they're getting more and more unruly. The fact that you can sit there and say that you think that they do understand the gravity of what they're doing and they're still doing it, they're pretty damn demented now. Because I'll be honest with you, because I did. Yeah. I knew what I was doing. If I did something bad, like, like say, for instance, if I went and stole this candy bar, I knew it was wrong. I knew what the consequences could be. I knew that possibly I could get caught for shoplifting. Police might come. Like I'm already analyzing. But could you understand this. depression in another person? Uh, like yeah. what's the pressure? I guess for me, I had never experienced I depression understand. at that young age. That's why I didn't want to well, get caught. I did, if I did but, it. Nah, that's a good point. That's why I didn't want to get caught if right. I did it. Right. If a motherfucker no, you're right. think it was wrong, you're right. You're I'd right. walk out the store with the candy bar in my hand. Donnie, as soon as they tell me what are yeah. you doing, I'd be like, what the fuck's the problem? You're right. I don't You're right. It. I thought I could, you know what I'm saying? I don't know any better. You, know you hit it on the head right there. Before a motherfucker sit there and hide it, put it in their clothes, you know what you're doing. You know you have to take it out like that because if they see you with it, they're going to call the police or they're going to 86 you and make you give it all back. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, you got to be- Why would you be concealing your actions if you didn't know it was wrong? If you didn't know. So, uh, so that goes back to say that I know these kids do understand. You know what yeah. I'm saying? To a certain degree. I'm to a certain degree, yeah. I'm not saying they yeah. have to fucking- yeah. They understand life just yet. I guess when you have kids and you realize that people can hurt your kids, now when I look at other humans, it now hits my head, that's somebody's son, that's somebody's daughter, that's somebody's brother, that's somebody's mother. Where as in like middle school and high school, I just felt like I had empathy for people that fucked with me a lot when I was younger 
now I look back and I'm like, man, they were kids. They didn't truly know that I was getting the shit beat out of me at home. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know anything else. Why I didn't like to to fight. I didn't like to fist fight because my my stepfather beat the shit out of me and almost killed me. I'm not really into physical stuff. I got smothered with pillows. Don't get too close to me. What was the last like incident you remember with him? Uh, I was uh, six years old, and um, he had beat me back in blue. And my mom came home a little bit early from work. What she said? So basically, she didn't know a lot of what was happening was happening. She kind of did. She kind of didn't. But um, she brought the police back at the end. You know what I'm saying? Like that day when, when when he left. He was really good at not leaving marks with a lot of shit that he was doing. Putting guns in my mouth. Leave us in hot cars for an hour. At a, you know what Vegas weather is like. Hell yeah. Leaving babies in the hot cars yeah, for hours can't, at a time. Can't do that. Tried to kill my little sister, dropped her on her head when she was newborn, and then like pretended like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was an accident. But he did a lot of stuff like that. But finally, he just beat me back in blue. And then my mom ended up bringing the police home. And that was the last time that I ended up seeing him. He chased us around from uh, shelter to shelter for a while. But uh, he eventually ended up getting like doped out, moved to California and died. You know what I mean? Damn, bro. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate, man, that a child kind of go through that, especially. This ain't even your parent. Like, this is just yeah. somebody that, you know what I'm saying? You're like, man, I know this ain't my dad. I only like, known him for a year. Yeah, this motherfucker's sitting here beating my ass and, and fucking me yeah. up. Yeah, and you're looking out the window, you're like, where's my real dad? Like, you're missing your real dad. Because you remember how big your dude, like, my dad was, I remember my dad's muscles were big. He could protect me. You're right, praying to God right. every night. Like, send my right. daddy home to protect me. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, he abandons you. He leaves you. You know what I'm saying? He leaves you there to get beaten like that. So, but you know what I mean? At an early age, I understood I'm by myself. No one likes you. No one's gonna like you. And it made me, uh, it made me start reaching for violence for respect, and not for respect to be cool, bro. Just to be respect, so motherfuckers will never fuck with me again. You know what I mean? Let's talk about your violence as a teen. Yeah. Let's talk about that. What was the What was the deal? What you was getting in a lot of fights? What was the problem? So in the beginning, like I said, I, I really didn't like fighting. I would always run. violence is violent. Like yeah. you, that, that's past. Like hey, I just want to catch a fight. Like you said, man, you want to. Yeah. Put a real hurting on somebody. I wanted to shoot somebody, bro. There were times where like I wanted to shoot people. Um basically Why was that? Because I was always very skinny when I was younger. And I felt like when you're in middle school, there are kids who hit puberty a year or two before you. So they'll be six foot, almost two hundred pounds, ready to play division one football. And you're a buck twenty, five foot eight. And they know that they could pick you up and put you on your neck. So they're just gonna treat you bad every day at school. Nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Then you start getting older. You start catching up in gaps. You start doing your shit. You start playing with pistols, start playing with guns. And now every time I bump into one of these motherfuckers, I'm going to show them what time it is. You're going to have to tap out to me right now in the middle of a conversation. Next time I see you, like, like you think shit's cool. Like, I forgot about what the fuck you did to me. Yeah. Cool, I can't whoop you. I'm going to pull my pistol on you, bro. You know what I'm saying? If I can't whoop you, I'm catching fades with anybody that... Anybody that bullied me that I didn't catch a fade with a couple years ago, we're catching fades next time I see you. You know what I mean? Like, we might have even talked and been cool in the meantime, but now I'm a different person. It's revenge tour. Bro, I'll say this. So it, but I was a baby. <clears throat> I was 15. Sometimes, right. But I think people, we, we need to say this because people need to hear that. Like, you don't, like, you're going to take ass whoopings, man. Just, right. it don't always need to be a gun in the mix because you know Definitely what? Not. Only, probably what y'all was fighting over, especially at 15 fucking years old. Probably was stupid any fucking way. 90% of it. You know what I'm saying? It had no problems from a motherfucker just even walking by and y'all just lock eyes and don't stop looking at each other. Now y'all saying, what's up? Now it's all, yeah. now it's turning into this big ass altercation. I used to see that shit all yeah, the time. For bro. sure. Stupid shit like yeah. that. Just bumping a nigga, walking by, bumping a nigga, and, and neither party wants to Egos. say, hey, my bad. Egos. You know what I'm saying, man, my bad. I didn't mean to bump you. You know See, and, and like then for me, it was so not ego because for me, it was just like, well, I guess it is ego. I was fueled by ego, and that's what got me into boxing. But for me, it was like, it was cool to fuck with Keegan. It was cool. If I if I want to impress everybody around me right now, let's go fuck with Keegan. Keegan won't fight back. Let's go fuck with Keegan. So you can only take a, a few years of that. Boom. Then one day, I caught the fade. I stuck up for myself, and I realized, oh, my God. That's all I got to do. Mm. Cool, it's up from here. You know what I mean? And anybody that really from Vegas that knows me, bro, is going to know. About 15 years old, we start touching that freshman year of high school, and motherfuckers turn into a real demon out there, bro. You know what I mean? I'm not proud of it. I don't think this shit's cool. You know what I mean? And I didn't end up shooting nobody, but, you know, it was a lot of phase. And I, and, and I wasn't a gangster neither. It was some real gangsters out there I grew up with too, bro. Yeah. You know, so that's one thing. I'm not as a gangster, homie, but there were some gangsters around me. You know what What's I mean? What side of town you hang on all the time? Um, so... Specifically, West Side, North Town. It was West Side. Side. It was more West Side, bro. Like, yeah. like, but there's a difference between West Side and West Side. I'm not saying I'm West Side like Sunny's Market West Side. 
Because people from Vegas gonna see us and say, bro, you ain't never been at Sunny's, bro. And you're damn right. Like there's West Side. You know what I'm saying? Like projects. Sunny's cool. Uh, but but there's projects. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, we weren't it's, in the it's projects. Definitely, uh, bro, it's definitely fucked up over there. But it's some real niggas over there, man. Our, yeah. Shit, it's like all schools down D Street. Like, yeah, exactly. D Street, H Street. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, all that. I know, I'm, shit, I'm gonna half them niggas over there, man. But then, like, what a lot of people don't know is it, it's not just that area, but mm. like you go down to like um like Clark High School. Yeah. Penwood and Arville. Yeah, Arville, Penwood. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's really where I did a, got in a lot of trouble at. Like, it yeah, may not be remember, the projects, but it's like... I remember getting into a lot of people. It makes me BPLs over there. Everybody over there. Okay, man. so you understand? Yeah, yeah it's not I'm fucking here. lovely. Not you know what I'm saying? I'm it's not, not property. Area. So that's where area. I was getting in trouble at, though. It was over there by Clark. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Penwood and Arville, bro. That's really where I was at most of the time. Then, and then uh, Charleston and Torrey Pines. Uh, Charleston and... Uh, yeah, Charleston and Torrey Pines. And then um, there's a place called Casada, a place called Westbridge. Just a couple, like, little notorious little little joints for us when we were kids that we would know about if we were over there. You know what yeah. I mean? But, you know, it just uh, it, it just made me more aggressive. And um, luckily, I got popped real quick. I got locked up real fast doing that shit. Because if I wouldn't have got locked up, who knows how far it would have went. Well, so, I, you know. well, tell me, I'm, I got another question for you, man. How did the, how did the music save your life? How do you feel like, because obviously you hear, because it sounds like, man, if this shit is all true, what you're saying, I'm not over here going to yeah. say that it is. I ain't going to say that it ain't. Yeah. But if this is all like, what, because <clears throat> obviously you're here with us, what what helped you get away? What helped me escape the young trauma stuff, right, was um, when we moved, when we got away from my stepfather, when I was six, we moved into a house. My uncle was a CD lover. He had nothing but a bunch of CDs, wall to wall CDs. Walk in his room, and he was always shelto, a beeper, jumpsuits. So that hip hop shit was in us. We're Italian, you know what I'm saying? Gold everywhere. So he had Ice Cube. Ice Cube was popping at this time. NWA was really hot, like all vintage hip hop. And I would sneak and take his CDs and play them in my in my little CD player, or I would take his cassettes and put it in my Walkman. And uh, Mace on one side, Big Pun on the other side was one cassette that I got to keep. And then the the Slim Shady LP dropped. Oh, and um, and for me it was you like slim shady. Oh, you, and I'm not really even when like you really stood up it's when you start hearing slim not shady. I kind of thought it was so. This is what I like. If, if you play slim, I wish <laughs> we could listen more. to it together. I wish we could listen to that first EP together right now because it was cool, man. It was like I what I didn't like the when the real slim shady. I didn't like the corny stuff. What I liked was is the way that his cadences and the way that he could paint a picture and I could see things. And then how graphic he was. That's your favorite rapper. I'm a baby. Nah, uh uh-uh. uh. I mean, like, like all time GOAT, he's in my top three. But like after the age of six, and I started exploring hip hop more, yeah. and I understood that you didn't, I thought because I was white that I shouldn't be in hip hop. It was always BET. And it was like my mom and my uncle and stuff, they were like, like, don't watch that. It's not for you. It's not yeah. that like they didn't like black people. It was just like, just so you know, like that's black entertainment television. Like that's for black people. You're white or you're Italian. You know what I'm saying? Like they would tell me in Italian, like, that's not really for us. Like, they wouldn't tell me to change the channel. They didn't care. But they, you know, so I thought it was bad. I thought that maybe I wasn't allowed to be a part of that culture. You know what I mean? So when I saw a sli- when I saw Eminem do it, and I saw how many people accepted it, I was like, oh, so it's okay that I'm writing my raps. Man, listen, bro. Let's keep it all the way abandoned. And Donnie, quote me if I'm lying. What really had M cracking was being with Dre. Oh, for sure. He got course. with Dre, homie. Like, that's what really... It it, it it took him everywhere, of bro. I, and I know I'm telling some facts on that. Like, I, dad that, like, beat him in the Olympics, in the rap Olympics. I, I, where I he got so. signed at. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, and all respect to him, but I'm just like, bro, he. But what about Mason Big Pun? Like, a lot you know, of people. I'm going to say this, and I, I'll get off the M shit, but I got to say, bro, when's the last time you've been outside, man, and you heard somebody, what, what, you're walking down the street or walking to your car, and you hear somebody riding down the block banging an Eminem album? Well, listen, I'll, I'll tell you this. My Answer best friend, real. Yeah, when? I would say probably four years ago, and that, this is why I'm about to say this. My homeboy who's from the projects, who was born and raised on the West Side, is a real gang affiliated, bro, from a Las Vegas gang, homie. Like, for real, for real. I, I, he really should be on here and tell his life story. He's the one that put me on him as I got older. I was like, nah, man, it's just corny, bro. I was like, Eminem's corny. He can rap, M's, but he's corny. I'm not going to say M's corny. Listen, he's extremely just... talented, but his sound was just not for me as I got older. It wasn't swaggy like that. You know what I'm saying? But my homeboy, who's black, through and through Project Baby, Section 8 housing is how we met. All right, we get that part. Loved Eminem. Like, to this day, that's all he listens to. So, like, for me, I can't answer that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's just not your 
your go-to. And listen, is anyone going to pull up at the party and at the club and say, hey, play that Eminem? No. No. But, but to be fair, is someone going to say, hey, play that Joyner Lucas? <laughs> Yo, yeah. it, yo, play that Joyner Lucas. Is Joyner Lucas not crazy lyrically? When's the last time yo, somebody yo, said, hey, hey play that Nas? Lie. You hit, like, especially out, here, especially out here in the L.A. scene. Like, you'll definitely hear some shit like that. Like, yeah. that they'll have it, like, a club or a bar. Somebody's throwing a party or something, like, and somebody got that in the mix, some Joyner Lucas or something like that. But it's not as, you know what I'm saying? But when's the last time somebody but, said, hey, throw that Joyner Lucas on? Nobody. But he's hard as a but he's hard. I'm a real motherfucker. I'm going to tell it for what it is. Like, because I he writes songs about suicide. He, he does. And people are hating himself the in the video. He had the ADHD. ADHD. He had the ADHD. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I do because I'm a lyrical guy. That's why I know him. That's why I knew even that the album. Lyrics. I thought that was a dope album. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, where that's where Eminem's lane is, right? Like, think about how crazy it is to sell Grammys and stuff and have diamond plaques and no one is saying throw that on. It's all about who you with, man. Like, I always say this, But they right? still got to buy the albums. Let's, let's look at, <clears throat> and I definitely want to get back to, you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, how, sure, you, how you got sure. into music. Yeah, but yeah. let's really look at the facts here. The music's kind of been trash, right? The music's kind of trash today. For sure. It's not even about how good the music is. It's about the marketing and the stra the marketing strategy and the team that you got it's behind true. you that can put it in certain places. I understand what you're saying. To where you'll turn on the radio and you're like, who put this garbage on here? Man, Ed, man they all teamed it. And who had a better marketing squad they than Eminem? All fucking team. And who no, had a better team than Eminem? Nobody. 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 You nobody can't beat Dr. Did. Dre in Aftermath. You, you can't. can't. You can't beat them. Can't beat but, them. But you, so you say this is the type of music he was listening to. You At say. a young age. And it just, because whatever I can get my hands on. Ice Cube, Mace, Big Punisher. Um, and then the Slim Shady LP dropped. And that was a big deal because everybody, if you remember correctly, they were dumping his CDs in New York onto the onto the ground, stomping on them, lighting them on fire. He was like the chaos guy. It, they wanted to ban his shit and make it illegal. Mm -hmm. And that played perfectly into their press. They knew how to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. So so it was just like, damn, like I'm not supposed to have this. So the fact that I was able to get, you know what I'm saying, a copy of it and just play it repeatedly, that's just what I could get my hands on. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I, I was able to write about the pain that I was going through. So I was just nice with like you know what I'm saying I'm a writer, bro. That's what I do. I just write, 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 write my way through pain, and that's what that gave me. That's how the music was able to save me. I, I'd be locked in my room for two, three months at a time, bro, at, at seven and eight years old because I got grounded for some bullshit. So I'd be locked in a room for months at a time, bro. So you're writing at eight. Oh, for sure. I was writing, bro, I'm telling you, man, my reading and writing, my mom made me read and write from a young, that's one thing she really did good, National Geographic books, books about World War I, World War II. She would make me read them and then write shit about it. At a young age, kind she taught like me how to play chess at three. Idea. Yeah, man, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so it was easy for me to just get my pain out through writing, scribbling. And then I started trying to make it rhyme because of the music influence. So how long you been doing? You've been doing music. When did you actually jump into music? Like my like, first time in a booth. At eight. But let's yeah, let's. When be did real. you? Yeah, I didn't know how to like do a song or nothing. It was more like poetry. But um, the first time I really started getting into music and started trying to really rap was probably thirteen. First time I ever touched a microphone was probably thirteen at the homie's house. Those niggas laughing at you. Of course. I was he thought it was funny? Like man, what the fuck is you doing, bro? Of course. Uh, the homeboy Dre, man, the homie Dre, man, one of my best friends. He would gas me up. And I'd be freestyling, thinking and making voices, being weird, almost like Wayne does. Wayne was a, a there's a huge inspiration. Wayne, the mixtapes were dropping from Wayne. So I'm thinking, man, I don't need a, a pen and paper. I'm a freestyle everything. I'm making goofy songs, high voices, low voices, just doing my thing, freestyling. It's hot garbage, but the homies making it sound like I'm going. You know what I mean? So I'm showing everybody, and everybody's like, bro, what is rubber hubba bands, bro? You got rubber hubba bands? The fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? So I'm just Sound embarrassing like some myself. Rubber hubba bullshit. Yeah, it was some rubber hubba bullshit. <laughs> the fuck on? Oh, on? it was terrible. <laughs> but you know, you gotta crawl before you walk, bro. For sure. You know, and I was trying to portray an image. Oh, listen, Fifty dropped at this time. Biggest inspiration of my life probably was 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 Fifty as well. I'm 13 years old and I'm looking for guidance, bro. I see that boy, that motherfucking massacre dropped. Crazy. I said, I got to be a gangster, bro. I want to be a gangster. I want to be... That's, I wish that was my fucking dad, bro. That's what I used to tell motherfuckers. Like, I wish 50 was my dad at that age. You know Why? what I'm saying? Why do you wish 50 was your dad? He was strong. He could he would catch a fade with you. He would anything... Everything that I was weak on when I was young, I saw in 50, he was like a he was like a lion inside of a jungle. He was the biggest lion inside the biggest jungle. Mm. And I, I aspired to be that way. I was so tired of being skinny and little and being bullied and fucked with. I just, when I would walk out the house, I'd have that massacre on and just be like, I'm ready for whatever today. You know what I mean? 
That massacre got a lot of motherfuckers put in jail, I promise. One of them white boys that got a lot of pent up anger. Like you, know, you got a lot, not even that, maybe like you got a lot of energy and you didn't really get to let it out. Like you didn't really get to let it out like you probably should have. I mean, that it came out sense. in robberies and, and gangbang. Listen, all yeah, these young I mean, kids gangbanging and shit, shooting each other. You think they didn't grow up, but both parents are crackheads? A lot of my homeboys, both their parents I are crackheads. I thought you said you wasn't no gangbanger. You, you said you wasn't no, no banger. You knew them. That's what I'm saying. Like, but you grew up next to them. You yeah. see them in very similar environments. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, the only difference is I had a good mom. Biggest blessing of my life. Mm. They, both their parents are on crack. They're alone. They don't got nothing. So what did they end up doing? We're together robbing stores now. So We're these together. string of robberies, you must have went to jail for them already because you course. wouldn't be comfortable talking yeah, about Yeah, years it. ago when I was 16. Let's talk about I got long, all my paperwork too. How long uh, did you go? Uh, I ended up doing two and a half years total. Um, I had to fight my case for six months and it wasn't even the case about uh, guilty or not guilty. This case is about are we going to try him as an adult and is he going to go away for 50 or 70 years or are we going to give him a chance to keep him as a juvenile and we have to release him when he's you gotta 19? Release him. Yeah, you got to release him. When you're 19. So uh, that was, so I sat there for six months the fight. Yeah, with a was, PD. Yeah, yeah. That was the fight. Because when I got, you got to think about this. The dude I was with was 20. I was 15. We're sitting in an interrogation room. We're separated. What's the first thing they're going to offer me, Sharp? I'm 15. He's 20. What are they going to tell me? Yeah. You're street savvy, bro. You know. Hey, he got child endangerment. Yeah. He forced you to do this. Yeah. You go home tomorrow after you see the judge with an ankle monitor. Yeah. That was my first deal that they offered me. Told him I want to see my mom. So we sat there for six months. We fought that. And my PD even told me, she's like, listen, um, we're going to take this. It, you know what I mean? Once I didn't get certified, once they made the decisions and they didn't certify me, my, P, my PD is like, listen, they may come to you and try to knock like six months or a year off where you may only have to do like a year in camp. Don't risk your life and fuck around and get chipped and, and, and be tattletailing over fucking 12 months. You're going to be home, and, and you might even be able to graduate high school. Make sure you do your camp. Do the best you can. You're coming home soon. The worst is over. Yeah. And we rode that motherfucking storm <clears throat> out. So they put you in a boys' camp? Yeah, it's called like Rite of fire Passage. Camp, like a fire camp. It, yes, exactly. And it's called it's Rite of Passage. Mm. And um, the thing about this, Sharp, was that it wasn't just for kids from Vegas. It was for kids. It was Northern California, Southern California, New York, Indiana. It was everywhere, bro. Yeah. So you think you're a tough guy. And you walk in that motherfucker, and you meet you meet an SA for the first time. You meet a Northsider for the first time. You meet a GD for the first time. You meet real but crips, I'm gonna keep it real, real bloods for the first time. But I'm, and I feel you, and I don't mean to stop you, but I'm like, if you was already in the streets, bro, you was already meeting these type of people. Yeah, so but, that shouldn't shock you. Like when I'm no, no, listen, no, no, I'm, no. But I'm there's a difference in jail. LA gang banging. Hey, but I'm telling and you, in politics and what what you happens in run Vegas. Into everybody, let me tell you something, dog. Vegas. That's L.A. backyard. They coming through. Everybody's is going like this, back and forth, back and forth. So you're going to run into a little bit of everybody, especially if, you's a, especially if you's a real one and you done traveled the country. Nigga, hell, I done been all over the motherfucking country. I done ran into a little bit of everybody. They got them been locked up. If you can't country. expect somebody at 15 to run into all the heavy hitters in Vegas in, in the time I'm, span I'm just of the saying year. you're you know doing some like, gangster shit and you know yeah, like, but you're going to meet these type of people Okay, let me put it to you this, but let me put it this way. My first roommate, when I got out of the first part of the camp, Langy Langy Hop Akui, shout out Hop. He's going to see this. Six foot two, 250. Uh, Tongan Crip. He's probably not anymore, but at the time he was a Tongan Crip. Walks into my thing. Where are you from? Ba 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 ba. Grabs me, puts me up against the wall real quick. Well, he could kill you, bro, with his hands. You're not from nowhere. For the first time in my life, it was like, oh, like, this shit got to stop. This shit got to go. You don't got no choice. You have to be who you are. All this shit you've been doing to try to feel better and to make your ego better and to try to fit in, got to go away. We're here for, this is the rest of your life now. I'm transitioning from a young boy who wanted to copy and be in that street life and was getting caught up in it to straightening my shit out and becoming a man. Understandable. But what I'm saying is <clears throat> I was 15 too and running the streets. Everybody I was around was older. And when you out in the streets, it's a melting pot, brother. You gonna run into a little bit of everybody, especially if you moving around like you moving around. You ain't just hanging around little kids. You know what I'm saying? You gonna sure. be hanging around people that you can actually learn something from. That's who had like, me doing the robberies. That's who's teaching you how to make the moves that you make. That's why I would have never walked into a store so, without that. So that's why I say, just like when you go into jail, homie, you've already shit. You've already met people like that already in the streets. Now you're meeting. It was everybody just a different. Bars. It was a whole different level yeah. of that. Oh, for sure. It was just a, sure, it was but... kids who had been see this you gotta think this is my first time going to jail. You're a baby like 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 it's not like I grew up 
on Penwood and Arville from day one when I was a little kid, right? Like, like I was stuck in the house until a certain age, and then I get out playing basketball, get introduced, and within a year, I'm 50 robberies deep as soon as I start getting into this shit. And now you're in jail, and now you think you know what gangbanging is. Well, I know is. that neighborhood that you're talking about, and I was outside in it before you was outside in it. And I'll tell you this, you're going to run into a little bit yeah. of everybody all the way over there. No doubt. From, from fucking silver dollar on down. Silver dollar, swear to Come God, on, on my bro. mother, right next to the 7-Eleven. All the way on down. Listen, we were, I was hitting licks in the middle, of, uh, in the on silver dollar in that alleyway. As soon as you walk in, we were running around with guns. Uh, somebody damn near slapped me and the other little homie up because we came back with nothing. He said, y'all went out there with a gun and didn't come back with nothing and smacked the shit out the homeboy. And looked so, at me like I was stupid. You know so what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, so, so I know. Motherfuckers done been, I'm just saying, so you already done been around it. And I think this goes back to the fucking beginning where I say, man, kids know... What they be doing, especially at 15. You understood exactly what you was doing. Oh, you, uh, you, You've sat here, but you let have me sat this, here, though. Keegan, and you have told me, homie. Uh -huh. Like, you, you have broken down detail for fucking detail of how you were doing it, why you was doing it. Yep. That you really didn't well, have it's to, easy. Do it, but you 20, 20. to do it. Hindsight's 2020. This is the truth, though. When you have somebody that you would do, it, listen, you go from thinking that you're nobody likes you, nobody loves you. You're getting fucking bullied and beat the fuck up to now I'm standing up for myself. And the more I do this, the more these people love me. Now you have a small family. This gang or whatever the fuck you're playing with, they love you. They show you love unconditionally, you think. So you're going to do whatever it takes to start impressing them and, and make sure you fit in hard. So you know what I mean? Like you're going to get lost in that. Do you, do you think your music career is going to blow up out in Las Vegas? It's a question. Do I think it's going to blow up out in yeah. Las Vegas? Yeah. Do you, and have you fucked with some of the people that have like kind of made it? Out of there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like anybody that's from Vegas knows who the names are out there. I mean, Pee Wee Landlord is the first name that comes up to me. Yeah, Watch him do it from the gate, bro. You know what I mean? Fuck with you know. Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. I'm I, talking about somebody, man, like that's pushing the charts. You know what I'm saying? Really, like. There's not to too get many moving. people out there doing that. It's that's hard. why we had to come out to and, LA. And you and I'm gonna tell you, I'm back to where I was gonna go with it. That's why I'm like, I think Vegas artists, and I said this a while back need to really get up out of there because and nobody, it, it, it doesn't, for some reason, Vegas, it, it definitely promotes and stands behind entertainment, but it doesn't stand behind music. It's like you gotta already be like an established artist to become a residency, have a residency there. You know, you know this. Yeah. You ain't. We're not out in Vegas. They're not really allowed to like. They shut down like the fucking bunk no, rooms. You're not going to perform it. All that shit. Yeah. You're not they're, performing. They're, they're not allowing that shit. If you do, yeah. the police coming to break that shit up immediately. For sure. For Once sure. they hear that there's something about any kind of rap, it's over. Hip hop, anything. It's over. You can't get on in Vegas. And I, I, I kind of not in an argument with AD, but like I kind of disagree with AD because AD was trying to tell me when we first met that you could do everything you're doing here out there. I'm like, no, you can't. No, you can't. And like, like, and AD disagreed with me, but it's like it's okay, you know. Like, like I know not everybody's gonna agree with me. It's impossible. It's damn near impossible to make it in Vegas, like as a rapper. Like, and not only that, but sharp. Like, that's facts. You just can't, bro. That's where facts. are you gonna perform? I'm just giving at the real. hotel. Yeah, where are you, you gonna go gonna, to the nightclub? Where are you gonna perform? Come on, man. And it's like this: what you gonna pay him? You gonna be trying to pay him an arm and a leg? You better come with fifty thousand. Perform at Dre's or something nah, for man. a five minute set. A for people who set? aren't even gonna be paying attention to you, after. They ain't gonna even be paying attention on, to you. They're gonna be like, "What the fuck is he doing?" And what then everybody that lives in Vegas, like you said, you said it earlier, it's a melting pot, right? Mm -hmm. So why should I support this dude from Vegas? He's not like like L.A. It seems like like the music scene here is so crazy. O three Greedo, R J. Like you guys have your own genre. They're they support, supporting them. They're supporting them. Vegas don't got no support system, bro. Hell no. But and real quick, just so we can close this part out, I think the thing that that made me feel like it was something new when I was in that lockup facility is that um it was more organized. It was organized gangs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like there were repercussions. It's politics. Yes, bro. and we didn't have necessarily have that in Vegas as much at the time. You know what I mean? And to be fair, the shit that I said that I was hanging out with and shit, when the real motherfuckers that really ran that hood got out of prison. They kicked a lot of motherfuckers off, and they were asking people, who the fuck was letting all these goofy motherfuckers on here? So half the motherfuckers I was hanging out thinking that were from my hood or whatever, or whoever's hood, ended up getting put off anyway. So really, it was just a, a, a couple years of my life that I just got tangled up in some shit, and the people that really ran that shit were away doing time because there were some real ones. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Let's talk about your, well, okay, well, what kind of success were you having after jail? Okay, after so. After you got out. So we get out, I get a chance to do my senior year of high school. So you go from being in a camp, and that camp was extremely abusive, bro. They would beat the shit out of you. Those COs were fucking people up. Lawsuits and everything. So you just been getting beat all your life. I didn't get beat by the COs. I listened. But the kids around me were getting fucked up by those COs. 
They give you a headband. They put your feet out in front of you flat, put your head in between your legs, and they rub your head side to side until you get a scab headband. And if you talk or you do something stupid, they'll rip you out your bed at 2 in the morning. Thump, thump. You always know when something's finna go down because you hear the thumps coming out from the bunks. And then, you know, either they're getting fucked up by a, another couple students, it's some essays running up on some northerners or the vice versa, or it's the staff giving somebody a headband. But, um, uh, and we got me forgetting shit. Um, as, success afterwards. So I go from that weird-ass camp, I go from that weird-ass camp, that abusive-ass camp, into um, normal high school. Yeah, so you did 12th grade, got to do your senior year. I got to do my senior year. Yeah, yeah, there's something called a hardship. If you have uh, mitigating circumstances, some stuff going on, you can get an extra year of eligibility to play basketball. So I go out Wait, there. Wait, run that back? You just, bro, you just, you sped through that. You said there's what? Hard, something called a hardship. Got the hardship. So there's a hardship. You can get an extra year of eligibility for sports and for high school. Yeah. So you can go back for one more year. So because of what, what happened to me, because all the shit that I went through and I didn't get a chance to go to normal high school, they gave me my senior year. So I go out there, I play basketball, I make the varsity team. Uh, this is Twin Falls, Idaho. And I wanted to go straight from there to the community college. Um, but it was weird because all of a sudden I'm around kids that are acting up, talking back to the teachers, acting a fool. They call each other bitches. Like I'm around like like suburban people, like 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 square squares, like that. Like they, there's no rules of respect. They could do whatever they want. They could talk to whoever how they want. They're spoiled. I mean, well, I meet a lot of them type of people all the time, even through interviews and sitting down yeah. with people. Yeah, they talk like that because they, and I see it, I'd be like, man, they, they, they feel it's cool. Call him, let me call this man a man. He fucking bitch. Yeah. Get him trying to slap him yeah. or try to do like, and I see it all the time. Like just even going on, I'd be like, man, how the fuck is this even happening? But right. if you look at it, bro, nobody's, a, that's somebody that ain't never out of household to teach them, bro. Yeah. No, or they, they grew up with mom and dad and they just got whatever. Yeah, exactly. No one showed them what, what it is. But so I come from that 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 scene where you say the wrong thing, you get you expect consequences to what? they do whatever they want. And even speaking bad to the teacher, like you can't talk up to the CEOs. They'll put you at, they'll give you a headband. So I'm respecting my teachers doing everything. And I had to kind of like assimilate and just be normal. Like I would catch myself like sitting at my desk, like both hands on my thing, like I'm in camp. You know what I mean? So it was just a little bit of a uh, transition. I, I, I had some tattoos. And at that time, especially in the area that they released me to, it was kind of weird for a kid in high school to have tattoos. They weren't used to that. So like we would be, I would be on basketball practice, take my shirt off. I had a tattoo. People had a lot of like judgment for me. I was in a small town and the cops would fuck with me a lot because they felt like he's the kid that did all those armed robberies. He's on juvenile probation. That's why he has these tattoos. He's from Vegas. He's a horrible person. He's this. He's that. Like, they almost didn't let me on the basketball team because they really thought I was some kind of loose cannon or something. But um, uh, I got through my senior year of high school. Was not good enough to make the college basketball team. Wasn't even close. So I went back to Vegas. And um, you know what I mean? Like, I, I did the rap shit. I kept doing my rap shit. Got an internship at a few studios. I realized really quick that uh, engineers, it's just too hard to get a job as, like, a real engineer, like in in Vegas, yeah. not enough opportunity. Well, I mean, all right, and, and I we agreed about that earlier. Yeah, but let's look at the <clears throat> let's look at the technology that we have today, bro. That's the real reason. It's Home nothing. studios today. It's bro, you will fuck around and find an up and coming artist that's across the country that just wants some free beats or just wants yeah. somebody to engineer him. He fuck around and blow. Now you got you a bag. Correct. You know what I'm saying? We you can get mixes in your closet that you can get at a million dollar studio now. I mean, it's crazy. If you really think, if you really think about it, bro, like yeah. maybe maybe a while back, yeah, when the internet wasn't really being used as right. much, but now, man, there's so yeah. much technology, bro. Motherfucker yeah. can go get on right now as an engineer and fuck around, like I said, and you don't know who you'll run into doing oh, that. Oh, I see shit. what you're saying. See, see, for me at the time, I realized that engineering jobs were disappearing because people could go to Guitar Center and for five hundred dollars you could have a studio in your home for the first time. So now all of a sudden we didn't need four engineers. We only needed two because people were spending. I mean, you couldn't just buy the Pro Tools, bro. You had to buy some of the shit that came with it. No, too, but that's what I'm saying. For know? 500 bucks, you got the Pro Tools mini box with the software. And it was in the little box. Yeah. And now all these little rappers that were coming through just to do vocals that don't need instruments mic'd and shit stopped coming to the studio. Studio started dying. It was, it was a transitional period for the, for the music industry, for the recording industry. So I realized I had to get into another profession. That was my point. You know what I mean? Yeah. But really, I was just hiding my engineering to get free studio time anyway. Right? Like, I'm not really here to be an engineer. I'm here to rap. And I would just use the studio as much as I could.
But then I realized that music wasn't popping. I'm in Vegas. No one gives a fuck. You know what I mean? Can't afford music videos at this time because back then the red cameras were fucking 15, 20 bands a piece. So your music videos are going to cost you a couple G's. I'm broke. I'm not going to have the money for that. So I gave up and I took a labor job loading and unloading steel for a lighting company. And I would drive the steel up to Pahrump and do manual labor. I did that. And then I started learning about the lighting industry. They were selling lights to the hotels and we were, we were manufacturing the lights and then selling them to the hotels. So I learned how the lights got put together. They bumped me up to a sales position. I started doing nightclub sales on the side, bottle sales, table sales, bouncing back and forth to the lighting. I opened up my own lighting business by the time I was 26. And now by the time I'm 32, uh, this will be our second six figure year for uh, running our small uh, lighting company. That's dope. Yeah. I like that right there. That's hard. Hustling lights to the hotels, you know what I mean, and to the showrooms. And now we're about to have a website. We have a website up right now, but it's uh, it's across the country. You know what I mean? So we're drop shipping to Florida. We're drop shipping wherever. You know what I mean? Is this what's helping fund your music? Of campaign? course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. A million motherfuckers come on here and say, yeah, man, I'm like that. I'm out here moving bricks. No, I'm moving lights. It feels like I'm moving weight because that shit's heavy. <laughs> Hey, straight up. You know what I mean? No, I bro, feel it. I'm no, hustling feel lights, it, homie. I'm hustling lights. Listen, bro. <laughs> listen, bro. Listen. Listen, bro. Look, look, look. I could have went one of two ways. I could have kept boxing and I could have had a professional boxing career. Um, or I did the lights. The lights, when you see your first twenty five thousand dollar check. You smart with you got oh, it. Really? The only way, listen, the only way. I got something for you. Hey, the only way I'm respecting if I know that you just spar. You no, know, it's with funny because respectful. it's funny because, man, I haven't seen people that I'm so used to people knowing me that are around me. I never really have to prove anything anymore. Um, well, you know what, bro? But I don't mind not prove where, anything and everything. That's where. Don't, don't ever underestimate that life, bro. You gotta, you gotta coming stay. on the internet, motherfuckers are gonna dig. I'll give it <clears> to them. But I'll never walk in a room expecting somebody to know me because when you do that, bro, you might fuck around and, and bite, you, get yourself bit. You know, for sure. That's why I'll be like, and like expecting a motherfucker to know who I'm. I don't know the fuck you are. Fuck you. Like, I'm about to show you. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm about to show you a video of um actually what put me out of commission and the reason why I had to stop boxing this last couple of years. I had my ribs shattered by a guy that was um believe he was top 15 in the world at 168 i fight at 154 so i shouldn't have been in the ring with him i was being stupid i was being hard-headed but i felt like if i could survive with him and if i earned his respect there's no one that i would have to worry about at 154 so i got in there with him and uh, dennis doug and mama's boy ended up breaking my rib and that put me out for a while man um Is that what made you stop boxing that's what made me stop in the last couple of years I end up having now. I have back and nerve issues down my leg because when you shut, when you break your rib like that, and you have to lay down, they can't put nothing around you. You just have to lay there in bed, in bed rest, and let it heal. Well, when you lay there like that and things start healing, the nerves sometimes don't heal right, and because you're not moving and rehabilitating, your nerves will start dying out on the backside, bro, from where you're laying, like where the way you're positioned. Yeah. And when I got out of bed one time at the end, when I started healing up, I ended up, um, I was slanted. I was like this, looking in the mirror, skin and bones like this. So I had to build my shit back. And um, yeah, man, I, I just uh, never, I, I didn't want to box no more. I'm making good money doing the lighting. Boxing ain't finna pay my bills right now, so I stopped. That shit was breaking up your motherfucking body. Yeah. You feel like he broke your spirit some? Nah, fuck no. Because because here's the truth about the shot. If I throw, if I throw a shot at you and I dislocate my shoulder, that was uh, the last time I won. That was one of my amateur titles. That was the last time I, I won. I want to see the one where he broke your ribs. Yeah, I know. I want to show it to you too. I'm digging to my archives. You know what I'm um, I want to see one where he broke your shit up real quick. <laughs> um, it was really good, bro. Of course, that's what everybody wants to see. Just that. Mm, just get. But it wasn't. It's that's fine. what I'm trying hey, to say we, about you it. You gotta look for. It. Hey, we get the gist. No, of I got it though for you. you I got it. Don't trip. No, I'm it's get it good. It's good. It's good. We get. We get the gist of it. So you. So for your music, like, what's your plans, man? Like, what's the what's the future hold for fucking Keegan? Like, what's up with you, bro? I'm curious. So, like, feel like there's still some mystery in your history here. Um, I mean, not too much mystery, man. I I really gave you guys the rundown for yeah. the most part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Abusive childhood. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. went through some shit. Held it down. I got my paperwork. I stood ten toes, facing 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. We won't know because I never took it to trial or nothing like that. But I was facing almost the rest of my life in prison, and I didn't fold. And I got paperwork on that for sure. And if 1090 Jake or somebody wants to go through paperwork with me, we could teach these motherfuckers how to go through paperwork. I don't think and I'll he, show them everything. I don't think 1090 going to be tripping on you, bro. But uh, he, he he ain't tripping. But, I mean, here's the thing, though, bro. Like, I know I know what's about to happen, especially after you just said, you know what I'm saying, you, wanna, you know, motherfuckers want to see proof and everything, bro. Like, here's here's 
here's proof enough, bro. This is me walking into gas stations. Here's some of the evidence of that, bro. They got me. That's what they were hitting me with when I told you they were hitting me with pictures. And then if you look over, that's an impact statement. And this is what you really want to see, Sharp. Let's take a peek at that, bro. Motherfuckers are really sitting there facing a lot of time, bro, and didn't tell. And this shit ain't cool. I'm not sitting here trying to brag about shit. This shit is cool, bro. Like I said, I'm trying to help the youth and not have to be in that situation. But if motherfuckers know that your shit is real, then they'll listen to you. Before we get out of here, man, tell them where to find your music and your merch. You yeah. got some merch, man, going? I do got some merch going, man. And as a matter of fact, I got over you for you, bro. What you got over here, man? And I got you the light baby blue. Oh, that's hard right there. Boom, that's that so Keegan. Sure. The Keegan much a little bit wrinkled from being in the journey. It's all good, man. I appreciate you, man. But uh, that's Life's the logo. a journey. Sometimes things got to ride, you know? Yeah, you know what I mean? It was curled up in the bag. But um, yeah, man, we got the, uh, I got my name, my signature, my brand trademarked. Uh, we're on Spotify. We're live on Spotify right now. It's Keegan, K-E-E-G-A-N with a period. And then I-G is K-E-E-G-A-N underscore. And then my last name, C I R. I L L O Keegan underscore Cirillo. We go by just straight my name. I am who I am. My music's gonna reflect that. Spotify, Instagram, my YouTube is also Keegan underscore Cirillo. The music video with AD just dropped. Uh, a me and AD are gonna be uh, doing an album starting tomorrow. We're gonna be in the studio. He's gonna executive produce that. Be over top of me and coach me through that. And uh, yeah, man, we are gonna keep shit jumping. Hopefully something pops off these interviews. Motherfuckers might want to hear a little bit more about my story. I just want people to know this and everybody that comes like. This is what we we love, man. You know, it's the up and comings, but I don't want people to ever think like when you do these interviews, you automatically, it just puts you on. This shit is always just a stepping stone, bro. You know what I'm saying? For every artist on me. And when yeah. they understand that, like, I think it'll probably conduct some better interviews for the future when we all understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, listen, I'm gonna I'm, I'm keep it 100, bro. Like, I, I low key felt like sharp. Like, you press a little bit. I felt like maybe you had an attitude towards me a little bit, but it is what it is. We're at your house, we're in your home, and you're entitled. You always are who you are. Mm -hmm. So, I gotta respect that. You know what I mean? And that is yeah. what that is. I mean, you know what I'm yeah. saying? No, we appreciate you, man, yeah. for sliding through. Fucking with me, man. We're yes, gonna sir. chime out, man. And I'm gonna catch up with you. I'm gonna definitely go listen to your music. Because yeah. now you got me curious, man, really, to what's going on with you and see what you got going. You and AD yeah, got an album coming, man. That's gonna be all. Yeah, man. and it's my album. He's gonna be coaching me through it, executive producing it. So. That's live, man. Yes, sir. The Sharp Tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Hey, Donnie, shoot us out the motherfucking gym.